Okay then, I see that people are still filing into the room, but uh, we should go ahead and get started so we can keep to the agenda so we can have two very full days. So, uh, welcome everyone to the Exoplanets in Southern California Conference 2020 here in glorious Riverside. Well, it would have been, uh, of course, um, uh, but uh, we have an exciting meeting for you that uh, will enjoy the program. Uh, so just uh, to introduce myself, I'm Steve King. Uh, I'm chair of the uh, local organizing committee. And uh, in, in terms of my, my research, I've been studying uh, exoplanets for more than 25 years. And I also, uh, I, I use all different kinds of detection methods. I study uh, all the uh, Hubble zones, and Venus as a kind as an analog. So uh, I'm sure <laughs> Most of you are aware of the exciting result that was uh, released this morning, uh, and I've been thinking a lot about that over the past uh, couple of weeks. So, if you have any questions about that, I guess you can ask me in the in the ExoCal lounge. Uh, so, back in June of uh, 2019, I was asked if uh, we could host uh, ExoCal at UC Riverside for 2019, which is uh, always in September. And I said, no chance. <laughs> we just want to have time to get, get everything ready. And I wanted time to, you know, water the grass and make the people for, for everybody being here. Uh, so I said, no, when we won't do it in 2019. But we will do it in 2020 because that will give us lots of time to prepare. But uh, there's the pandemic right now, everything's on fire, so it's probably uh, all the best that we do this virtually. But hopefully, in the future year, we will actually be able to uh, welcome you to UC Riverside. So, uh, just a couple words about uh, logistics. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a pretty packed program for two days, which you can find on the conference website. And the way in which we have set this up is that you should all receive an invitation hey, Steven? to, to Steven? a Slack uh, workspace. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, would people mind, uh, it seems like we're having like a bandwidth problem maybe. So would people mind to turn off their video? Maybe that would help with the, um, because your, your voice is kind of crackling, Stephen. And we'll see if that makes it any better. Thank you. Sure. OK. OK. Thanks, Colby. Um, so that's one of the things I was going to mention about logistics, actually, which is that uh, Colby, who you just heard, is the god of this Zoom room. Uh, he's going to be uh, managing a lot of things to do with uh, running the Zoom room. So if you have any issues, then a call is the person to reach out to. But in terms of reaching out to people, we have the Slack workspace. And in particular, questions for each speaker should be directed to the Slack channel uh, for each session. And so if you look in the Slack workspace, you'll see that there is a, uh, a Slack channel for each of the sessions. That's where questions should go rather than in the, in the chat. And it's the Slack channel that the chairs will be looking at uh, in, in order to ask the questions at the uh, end of each talk. We also have Slack channels for announcements that will keep you up to date on new things happening uh, with the code of our contact. And we have two people in particular who you can reach out to for that, which are Tara uh, Bedrock and Kevin Henderson, both on the uh, LOC. Uh, we have a channel for technical help. And uh, of course, you can feel free to hang out in 
the power of the uh, XFL lounge and uh, have a chat there. Uh, so I also should mention that there is a channel for the poster sessions. And you'll see that uh, many people have been posting their posters into that channel. Uh, but that's a place where there can be discussion about the posters as well. Uh, and so at the end of the session, we're going to have uh, a little poll where some of the speakers have provided questions and responses so that you'll all be able to participate in that. So that should be some fun uh, uh, um, way to see what. And um, I also want to mention that through this whole uh, lockdown era, uh, I'm sure a lot of us have had uh, Zoom overload just way, way too many things. Uh, so we hope to make this a little more fun and interactive and uh, and less work for you. For you. I stopped your video, Stephen, just so, so um, bad. sorry. <laughs> No problem. Uh, so uh, we also have on the agenda, you'll see something called story time. And uh, that's uh, um, a, a place where we've selected a very diverse group of people uh, to just talk about their experiences during the whole lockdown and how it's impacted them and their work. And uh, as I said, it, it is very diverse. Uh, a range of uh, different people with uh, different experiences. Some of them have um, have babies, some of them have toddlers, some of them have no children. I'm kind of at one end of that spectrum uh, because uh, I uh, I guess I'm the, the oldest of the people who are going to be doing this story time. Uh, and I have uh, two teenage daughters, uh, 14 and 17. And so what I wanted to tell you about uh, my experience during this uh, whole lockdown uh, is the issue of mental health, which I uh, I think is something which is generally um, left largely unaddressed in academia as a whole. It's something that, that I'm very passionate about uh, dealing with that sort of thing. But uh, what it, by far the biggest challenge that uh, I've had uh, has been as a parent of two teenage daughters and dealing with uh, their mental health. That's been the number one thing which has uh, affected me. To, to give you an idea of how seriously uh, my, my daughters have uh, taken this whole pandemic, uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic, I'm sure many of you are aware that many teenagers were making jokes about boomers and saying, okay, boomer, and all that sort of thing. And so when the pandemic started to happen, uh, they were calling it the boomer virus because of the disproportionate way in which it affected uh, older people. Uh, so that should tell you everything you need to know about how seriously they, they were taking it. Uh, they only really started to take it very seriously was when the lockdown happened. And the, the reason uh, that they took it seriously is because they could no longer see their friends. And uh, I underestimated how important and complex the social structure of my teenage daughters was and how that was going to impact them. And it, uh, it, uh, it impacted them a lot. It seemed almost daily they would uh, uh, ask me in no uncertain terms to go see their friends. I would explain to them again why they could not. And their response after that would be, yeah, but I want to go see my friends, you know, and, and this really started to take a toll on them. And it has a, uh, become uh, more or less a daily task to make sure that they're, that they're still doing okay. Um, uh, go, now that they're going back to school with online school, I'm sure we all remember uh, uh, going back to school, high school after the end of the summer, the only good thing about that was seeing your friends again and that's been taken away. So, uh, so that's really been the tough uh, experience that I've found through this, uh, but we do feel like the end is in sight now. We're already in September. We're hearing increasingly good news about vaccines being developed. I talk to my daughters frequently about that because it's very, very important that they have hope that there is an end to this. That's been critically important to talk about the positive work that's been happening and the good time. 
Uh, and the good thing about it is that I've been able to uh, spend a lot more time with my daughters, uh, which I wouldn't uh, otherwise have. Um, the only other thing I, I wanted to say in this story time uh, part is to just mention that uh, it's been a significant struggle for me not seeing my colleagues uh, and uh, the value of going to actual meetings. Uh, a lot of people talk about, well, we're missing out on the networking and we're, and we're trying to mitigate that as best we can in the virtual world. But I feel very strongly that the value of in-person meetings is not just about putting faces to names, but also putting personalities to names and putting memories to names, remembering that time when you were with colleagues in an exotic city and you got lost trying to find a restaurant. Those kinds of stories are not happening at the moment. And uh, those are, are experiences that I've had that are very important to me. And I really think that they build a more collegial community. I'm noticing uh, an increasing amount of toxicity in social media um, uh, during this uh, uh, period. And I think that's partly because we're not spending time with each other in person. And so I'm really, really looking forward to getting back to in-person meetings and helping the collaborative experience all over again. So all of this to say that I can't wait to see you all again. I really can't. And um, uh, I hope that this next two days uh, will be a really great experience for all of you in seeing the collaborative work that's going on in Southern California and all the great exoplanet work that's been undertaken here. So um, with that, I'm going to stop talking and hand it over to the session chair, uh, which is uh, Kaylin Henderson. So thanks everyone, welcome again. And uh, Kaylin, over to you.